Hi design friends and welcome back to a new video. Today I want to show you how I want to improve my website sarabrunettini.com using an analytic tool called Hotjar. This time it's not gonna be a design and build tutorial. I've got something better for you. I want to show you how I've used the data in Hotjar to improve my content and drive users to specific areas of my website. And this is super important to do because a well-crafted pixel perfect website might not be so effective if you don't know what user are actually doing with it. Now, if you're not familiar with Hotjar, it is a set of analytic tools that allows you to collect qualitative data about your users. These tools are heat maps, funnel tracking, user pools, surveys, and more. But today I want to focus on the heat map tools, which allows me to see where users are clicking and how many of them are making it to various points of each page. By the way, Hotjar is free to use and it's super simple to install, especially if you, like me, use uh, Webflow. All you need to do is to add a line of code in the head of each page and that's it. So let's kick off with the home page. First, uh, let me show you how the heat maps uh, interface uh, works. So let's start off um, with a click uh, tab. This tab here shows you the number of clicks recorded while uh, the second one uh, shows you how users move across uh, the page. And the last one tells you what percentage of users are making it to various points uh, down the page. And here I can switch between devices to have a complete uh, overview of what all users are doing on the page. Right, starting uh, from the nav, um, I can see that uh, case studies, freelance work and about pages uh, are uh, very popular, but I also want to drive more traffic toward um, those pages, uh, which are uh, important to me. I think that uh, I want to call this uh, something else, uh, because maybe say ciao is not very clear, it could be called something like contact or uh, get in touch. And another thing I want to do is to incorporate the sign up form of the newsletter to the page to make it easier for the user to sign up. As I scroll down the page, I can see that uh, a few users um, have clicked um, on uh, my case studies. There are some random clicks on the images. And I also see that um, uh, a few of them had click on the word uh, crunch, uh, which, which makes me think uh, whether I should talk more about uh, crunch on this page. So I'm sort of disappointed that not many people have clicked um, on uh, my channel, but maybe it's because uh, they land uh, on my website uh, through my YouTube channel, so it will make sense that uh, they don't want to click on it. Also, this section needs uh, some thoughts and I see that uh, a few people have clicked uh, on uh, the title. Uh, maybe they thought uh, it was a link. It actually looks uh, like a link. Um, so yeah, sorry, this is my bad. Um, I can see some like clicks here going on. Maybe I could have more, more of these reviews. And the last section is not very popular. And uh, the fact that I'm not even doing much public speaking at the moment makes me think whether I should ditch it or move it uh, elsewhere on the website. I'm not sure for now. Now let's check uh, on mobile. Now, on mobile, it's pretty much the same. So now let's take a look at uh, how many people have scrolled uh, down the page. Hmm. I can see that uh, more than 50% of the visitors have made it to the bottom of the page, which is good, uh, but I know that this number could be higher if the content was more uh, engaging. Let's move on uh, to the case uh, studies. I can see that uh, many people uh, are enjoying uh, reading my case studies, but it's just uh, one for now. So I'm thinking to bring this block uh, to the home page uh, to simplify the journey. And I also think it would be really cool to have a kind of microsite uh, for my case studies if, uh, let's say, I'm looking for uh, a new role and um, I want to send out my portfolio to a recruiter or hiring manager. Then in this case, I want them to get this URL and 
look at my case studies rather than all the other things I'm doing on the side. So I think that for this reason, it will be good to explore uh, a design solution where, um, yeah, um, I treat uh, my case studies as a separate uh, microsite. I think I will retire the freelance work page because uh, honestly, I'm not doing much uh, freelance work uh, at the moment, but I can see that um, many people clicked uh, on uh, the links. So I'm thinking that perhaps I could bring uh, my favorite uh, projects uh, to the new portfolio and hopefully it will solve the problem. Now, I've already designed the new look and feel of my website, so I'm gonna kick off by showing you how I've set up my Figma file to quickly enable me to turn insights into actions, so let's take a look at it. The first thing I did was to comment on all the things that required my attention, and then here is where the magic happened. So I wireframed uh, the main pages uh, and then I moved on uh, to the high fidelity. At the beginning, uh, I liked this style because uh, it's very similar to my YouTube cover. I like the choice of colors, but then I thought that it looks quite chunky and heavy on the page. So I went for this uh, light um, mode uh, kind of vibe and I think uh, it works uh, pretty well. And I didn't design the rest of the pages in Figma because uh, I'm used to designing directly in Webflow to speed up uh, my process, uh, but uh, I recommend you doing it if you're not familiar with uh, Webflow. Now, I've already created the site in Webflow as I find it easier to design the whole thing uh, by myself uh, and show you the final result uh, at the end. Honestly, it took me more than I planned, uh, like 10 hours, uh, which is mad, uh, but um, I think that all these uh, details and animations were definitely worth uh, the time and effort. So I don't wanna keep you waiting, so let's take a look together. We are now in Webflow. Let's start uh, from the home page. So I've created this uh, little animation here because I really wanted to drag uh, the attention and uh, keep the user um, engaged and entertained since uh, the beginning. So I did uh, that. And if you wanna see how I did it, maybe I can uh, create a tutorial about it. By the way, this is not a Webflow tutorial, but if it's something that uh, you'd be interested to see, let me know in the comments. So as we scroll down the page, you can see that I've used this uh, lovely hand lettering font uh, called Grayscale that my friend uh, Charlie created. And if you want to use it for your projects, I leave a link in the description. So I made the YouTube video bigger and bolder. I also have this like little shadow. I don't know if you can see. And that's because um, I really want it to be the focus of, um, my, of my new website. So let's start um, from the beginning. As you can see, I've added some uh, animation, some uh, motion, because um, I wanted to make the, this website more engaging and dynamic. And I've also decided to talk about the things I do on the side, like uh, my YouTube channel, uh, live streams, uh, mentoring, and this new uh, UX course, because ultimately I want this website to be focused around uh, my content um, creation. As you might remember, not many people clicked uh, on the review reviews page, so I decided to bring uh, more uh, reviews uh, to the home page and I placed this uh, big button here where you can uh, learn more. And I just really like this font. Uh, oh, it's just perfect on this page. Anyway, I didn't forget about my design work, of course. Um, and I placed the case study here where you can easily access to it uh, while uh, previously you had to click on this button and then click on this page and then uh, ultimately click uh, on this button before you can uh, read uh, the case study. So I think this uh, solution has simplified uh, the journey. 
And as you might remember, I moved the newsletter from uh, the heading to the bottom of the page and I came up with new, this new big uh, design that takes up uh, more space. This is actually how it looks uh, when the website is live. And now I'd be very curious to see if this new big design uh, works better or uh, it's just a waste of space. But yeah, we will see. We will see how it goes. I think it's nice. Now let's take a look um, at the portfolio. So as you can see here, I've changed the navigation because as I said, I wanted to treat this page as a separate uh, website, kind of uh, a microsite. And I've merged the freelance uh, design projects uh, with uh, case studies. Uh, this one's um, here. And another thing I did was to add uh, the resume at the top so that um, you can uh, you can read my resume and i think this is an important and interesting resource to have not just for recruiters who want to get in touch with me but also for other designers who want to get inspiration for their um, cv resume or whatever you want to call it now before we wrap up i just wanted to show you this new page here that i call the design resources and i'd be very curious to see which ones uh, gets uh, the most uh, clicks uh, so that maybe i can move it at the top uh, of the page and then uh, in the mentoring uh, sessions page i didn't change the page a lot uh, by the way this is the page where i keep uh, all um, uh, the feedback from uh, our mentoring sessions but the only thing i did uh, was to add a call to action which for some reason I, I i didn't have it before and yeah i know it's really bad because it, it's really important to have it now let's take a look at the full website together To quickly recap what we've learned today, let's go back to the beginning. First, I installed Hotjar on all the pages of my website to collect data about the users visiting my site. Then I used the heat maps uh, tools uh, to see where most people are clicking and scrolling. I took some screenshots of the heat maps and placed them into my Figma file where I brainstormed my ideas on how to improve the homepage and the navigation as well. Then I designed uh, the new layout in low and high fidelity. And finally, I created uh, new pages in Webflow and deleted the old ones uh, to use the same URLs, uh, which means that I had to add uh, the hot just snip code again. I also kept a copy of my old uh, website uh, because, um, you know, it's always good to keep it just in case and maybe look back in a few years uh, to see how my website has improved over time. And this takes us to the end of this video. I really hope uh, it was helpful, especially if you want to improve uh, your portfolio to gain more views or even more people contacting you about uh, job opportunities. I think it's definitely a great tool for designers of all sorts and you should definitely give it a try if you haven't done it yet. However, I also recommend that you just don't look at the data, but you also feel free to come up with new ideas and change your designs based on your personal choices. 
for example i realized that uh, i wanted to talk more about my content creation even though people were more interested in my design work uh, and maybe they're not even interested in my content but i still wanted to make it uh, the focus of my website and that's it if you enjoyed this video i would be super grateful if you leave a like and subscribe and maybe in a month or two i will be able to report back and let you know if this new design was successful or not so successful and this is another good reason to subscribe so thanks for your time and till the next one ciao